Let's continue to analyse what we saw yesterday in the Premier League and take you to the 5.30 kickoff at St James's Park. Liverpool beat Newcastle 2 0 yesterday. That, in fact, inflicted their first defeat at home this season. And that was all courtesy of two first half goals from Darwin Nunes and Cody Gakpo. And uh, within a very, well, very early on in the game as well, Newcastle had their keeper Nick Pope sent off for deliberately handling the ball outside of his area, which as a result means he will miss next week's Carabao Cup final, which is live on Talk Sport. Now, the interesting thing with that is because he will miss the game, Cass, you've also mm. got Martin Dubravka, who was on the bench and actually was substituted onto the game yesterday um, to replace the, the red-carded Pope. He can't play in the League Cup final because he already played in the League Cup for Manchester United, who are obviously who are Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle will be playing. So he's kind of... You, obviously, his cup tied. It means it's more than likely that Loris Carius, who's not yet played for Newcastle, will be playing in goal for them at Wembley. Um, before then, we get your thoughts on the whole situation, the game itself. This is what the Newcastle manager, Eddie Howe, had to say when he was asked about that red card for Pope. I thought it was harsh, um, the red card. I think the player's on an angle. There's defending uh, players recovering. I don't actually... I'm not clear on the rules what justifies a red or yellow in that moment. Mm. But I felt it was hard on Nick and of course there's repercussions which are you know, really uh, disappointing for us and for him. Mm. OK, so that was Eddie Howe's take on it and, and maybe he was seeking some clarification as to the exact reason he was sent off. Was he sent off because of the deliberate handball or was he sent off for the denying of a, of a goal-scoring Goal opportunity, yeah. which it, it could be that as well. Um, letter of the law, though, it is a red card. Oh, I mean, do you know what, Cass? I was watching it and I was still at uh, at the GTEC Community Stadium and I saw it and you know when you're thinking, oh my goodness, what is he doing, Pope? What is he doing? He came so <laughs> far out of his box to try and beat Mo Salah. And you know when you're thinking, and look, I've, I'm not a goalkeeper. I've never played the game in, at any kind of high level. So I don't know what goes through the mind of anybody playing in a, in a game of this sort of standard. But, well, you know, you're thinking, why are you not trying to kick it? Why are, you did, why are you falling on the floor and then as he's trying to sort of scoop it with his hand? What did you make of the whole incident? Well, he got caught in no man's land and in between and Salah's got half a yard on him. He's fallen to the ground, then he's decided to try and grab hold of it and let the law, yep, yeah, it's a red card. I The thing I don't like about it now is that not only we talk about missing the Carabao Cup final, which mm. is another problem in itself, but you're... The game is then gone. You're two nil down. Yeah. You go to ten men. You're not going to pull that around. Then so that now the game. Even though to be fair, Newcastle made a great fist of it with ten men. Yeah, they still went they, for they it. They really did. But the game was dead and buried at that point. Um, and then you can go on. Well, is it? F you know, how many penalty? Oh, sorry. How many things do you want to go against you? Because not only that, you end up missing the Carabao Cup final, yeah. which is, and I, I'm pretty sure. If you'd, we were talking about this off air, weren't we, with Joe Linton getting booked, that he... He was he a would, yellow card away from wait, suspension. But he wouldn't yeah. have missed the Carabao Cup final. No, no, because it's not a red card. His suspension, if he was to have picked up another yellow, would just carry over into the league, mm. whereas a red card is, is you're automatically yeah, yeah. suspended for the next It end. feels quite hard. You feel like how many times you want to be penalised in this one incident? Because, yes, he's made a mistake, he's grabbed hold of the ball, he's got sent off, the, that goes down to 10 men, you're penalised again, you're not going to get anything out of the game, which they didn't, and then you're penalised because you then missed the Cowboy Cup final. It feels a lot for one incident for me. Mm. And I get it's the rules, I understand all that. It just feels really, really harsh. Yeah, yes, I understand, just based on what the next game is. Because yeah. obviously it was, if it was another league game, it, no, in it, our heads it wouldn't matter as much. I understand what you're saying, but by the letter of the law, that's how it is. Hmm. They're not going to change it. They can't just suddenly go, do you know what, you're absolutely right, it's not fair on Nick Pope, he should play in the League Cup final. That's not going to happen, I, I, even though I know that uh, I heard Gary Lineker say, let him play, let him play, but <laughs> it's just not going to happen. They're not going to change the law for that. No, I remember talking about this with a World Cup final. You know when Gazza cried yes. and, and he in the semi final, and um, I always used to think about it. unless it was a really serious incident, you should be playing the best players, or players should be allowed to play in the World Cup final. You know, it had to be deemed something really serious that they could go. No, I'm sorry, that what you did in the semi final will not, you will not be allowed, able to play in the final. I think sometimes you have to have a little bit of leeway in sport, and for that incident, I would say 
it feels really harsh. Mm. Um, I think I'm right in saying that the next game then, if that was the case, he would miss the Man City game for yeah. a start. Yeah, so, miss Man City game, mm, okay. which is a blow mm. in itself. Just but double It just feels a lot of punishments in one incident. For yeah, me. OK. But as to the game itself then, uh, that red card happened in the 22nd minute. By that stage, Liverpool were already 2-0 up. Yeah. Uh, Nunes put them ahead in the 10th minute. Seven minutes later, Gakpo made it 2 Did you see the first five minutes, Nat? Did yes. you watch it go? Yeah, well, yeah, Well, yeah. it was Wolves away. I mean, Liverpool survived two big chances early on. I was thinking, well, no, it's not this again, is it, where yeah. they're going to give something Newcastle one? started it really well, yeah, positive, really well. As, uh, as you'd expect them to do. And funnily enough, the last time they were beaten at St. James's Park, Newcastle, was mm. last season, and it was Liverpool who beat them. So Liverpool have this hex over them for, yeah, they for some reason. Well, there, there were some good things for Liverpool, is that Nunes played well. Almost obviously, Alisson played well, even though their 10 men made some big mm. saves in the game. And Salah looked back to his old self without mm. scoring. Yeah. So there were three big things for Liverpool there. It moves them up to eighth, Cass. They're on 35 points. Newcastle, six points ahead of them. Yeah. There was a while ago where everyone was saying that Liverpool can't make the top four. But there's also that Liverpool have this knack of going on a run. Can Liverpool now go on a run and make it into the top four? I still think there's a lot to do for Liverpool. Mm -hmm. I still think they're vulnerable and I still think they give chances away. And this is not the Liverpool team of last season. So, you know, two back-to-back -back victories, which has been really important, Everton and then Newcastle. But I've still got to do a lot more for to convince Liverpool fans that they can actually make the top four. I think it's a big ask for them. I still think they're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. They're a side that are giving too many chances away in games. And, it, you know, and it's part of me was one of the reasons why I wanted to see 11 against 11 because Newcastle, with 10, was still causing Liverpool problems. Mm. But they do have a game in hand over Newcastle yeah. and it's stopped that sort of rot that they were going through Liverpool of successive away defeats where they had successively um, conceded three in those three defeats as well. And to go to Newcastle and to win and, and maybe not, as you say, be at their very best, but mm. still win. Well, it's massive. It's a massive confidence boost. Absolutely. And what we're judging Liverpool on the side, or I am, of what they were last year which they were mm -hmm. a long way from. Sure. They're nowhere near the team that was in, on the front of four tr uh, trophies last year or could have could have got, you know, Champions League, Premier League and League Cup, FA Cup. They could have achieved all that last year. They were a long way short of that. I think that's pretty clear. Defensively, their midfield has just not got nowhere near. And, it, and it's incredible in a short period of time how far they went backwards. Um, and so they've still got a lot of work. I think Liverpool fans feel nervous because I feel nervous about watching them. They make me feel nervous. They give mm. opportunities to everybody they play at the moment. They're not this team that just flowed brilliantly, loads of pace. It was lovely watching a goal again. They did it twice in a week. The one, one goal against Everton where they broke really quickly. They did that type of goal yesterday with Nunes' goal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Broke quickly. That's when Liverpool are at their best. Mm. Yeah, as we say then, Liverpool moving up to eighth in the table. They are six points off fourth spot with a game in hand as well. And, and maybe this is them turning that corner and they might go on that run that Liverpool have so famously been able to do before. The Sunday Sports Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Sunday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.